Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's John Lunn, aka Johnny Chips. This is going to be a one-off little bit of a technical video that follows on from a blog article that I've written. You can find the link to that blog article uh, in the description below. And um, what we're going to cover really is the um, the packaging of my Blazor WebAssembly app uh, into a Docker container and then um, running that Docker container to communicate with my robot arm firmware that's running off of a Raspberry Pi. So on that note, um, let's get stuck in. So I'm going to flick over to the to the desktop here so you can see that I've effectively I've got two Visual Studio Code windows open here. Now, I discussed in a little bit of detail the code, and you can find the link to a code a GitHub repository containing this code, so you can obviously follow this through yourselves. But I just wanted to show you really what was involved. So what we're looking at here, following off the back of the blog article that I've just published, is we're looking at the Docker Compose file. So the idea is we're going to run this Docker Compose file, and that's going to build our Blazor WebAssembly application, which is here, that I've just hidden off at the side there. So all the code for our Blazor WebAssembly is here. Um, we're going to use a Docker Compose file to call on this Docker file, as I describe in that blog article. And there's a copy of that Docker file. So essentially what we're doing is we're, we're using multiple, we're using the .NET image, the .NET v5 image from Microsoft to create a number of stages, if you like, to, to, to the build of this application. So like I said, I've discussed that in a little bit of detail. I just wanted to show you the running of that, what that looks like, what you can expect to see once you get your Docker Compose and your Docker file uh, correct. Um, so if you imagine this left-hand side of my screen here is all the code for the client server web application, the Blazor assembly uh, web web assembly application that we're going to be running to control the robot arm. We'll have a look at the robot arm in a second. On the right-hand side of my screen, you can see that this is another set of code. Now, essentially, this is, as, as the name suggests, the robot firmware. So this is the code that gets run on the Raspberry Pi, which is attached. And again, you can see pictures uh, on that blog article, uh, and I'll cut over to a few different cameras in a second. But fundamentally, this is all the code that we need to control the four servo motors that are attached to my robot arm. So without further ado, let's get into really just kicking off a build. So I've got my Docker desktop open. At the moment, you can see that I've got no images on this machine and certainly no containers running at the moment. So if we just take a quick look at the command that we need to run um, to build up that Docker image, put that image into a container, it's this, this command here. So because I've got a client server configuration, just to quickly show you, my Docker file is actually located under my server folder. So it's down here. There's my Docker file. So at the root of my code, because I need to pull my code from uh, obviously not just server, but the client side as well to package that up, I'm using a YAML file uh, as a Docker Compose. And I'm using the command up, which basically means that we're going to build my image and we're going to put that into a container and, and make the container run. So in theory, it should be up and running and ready to go. So without further ado, I'm going to hit enter there. And we're going to flick over to the Docker desktop and just have a little look, see what uh, what comes. So we're downloading <coughs> um, some of the images now from that container registry, so from Docker Hub. And as we download those images, um, you can see it doesn't take a massive amount of time. They appear in my Docker desktop. So there's my ASP.NET um, Docker image, which is going to be used for the, the web part, the web application. We're now downloading the SDK image at the moment. So the SDK is going to be used to build the application to so to run things like .NET. I'll click over here so you can see it. So we're going to be doing things like .NET restore now on this build image. So we can see now we've got the SDK file. And there's a story to why I'm using this hyphen focal, uh, because yes, there was a little bit of an issue with some certificates. But um, right, okay, we're on to step nine. So we're copying some of the files now over. We're using those images to create interim uh, images essentially one to build as you can see there so we've got an image called build and then we're going to use that build image um, get another copy of it essentially and then publish our application and then once we've got that publish um, done correctly uh, as you can see with our .NET commands where we're essentially taking that original base image if you remember was the ASP.NET image that we've exposed uh, port 80 and 443 on and we are going to 
um, basically set the working directory. We're going to copy over all the published artifacts from that initial um, build image, and we're going to set an entry point. And that entry point is essentially what my you know what my application is going to tie into, what the application is going to run. So. You can see, just um, doesn't take too long, a couple of minutes. And remember, this is doing a complete build and publish of our application, as well as then creating a final um, ready to, to rock and roll container. Now, you can see that's done. You can see now, this is my image, my Johnny Chips hyphen Blazer Wasm. That's the image um, I just got. I haven't put a tag on there. It's just latest. That's running. And that is actually running in this container. So we've got, so part of that um, that command that we issued so that Docker Compose up has now given me a running container. And I've got one instance of my image running in that container. So, okay, that's great. So we've got essentially the, the server client side. So the bit that we're going to have the controls that are going to uh, actually enable a user to move the robot arm. The next thing we need to do is we need to say hello to our robot arm. So where is our robot arm? There he is. So say hello. We'll do a quick... Uh, zoom in so we can see so you can see i'll just point out a few things on this image for now so you'll see that we've got the robot arm um you'll see the breadboard that white piece at the side there is really where all my electronic components are attached to and off out of shot is the raspberry pi attached with a ribbon cable so essentially i've got a ground wire i've got four servo motors attached to that thing with the orange light on is called a servo six so that's a monk's make board that essentially is attached to that battery pack that as you can see, I've got four sets of wires coming off at the top. Those orange, red, and brown wires go to each servo. So you can see just about that I've got servo each side of the arm. I've got a servo here for the claw. And there's a servo located in the base here that is used to kind of spin the arm um, uh, on an axis. So there we go. There's, um, there's a quick zoom in. So we've now got to get the firmware ready to really accept those comms from what is going to be my client-side application. And the way that those comms happen is using a technology called Signal R. So Signal R is essentially about um, your, your device, whether that be an IoT device or your end device, and whatever your client server application is, creates a persistent, permanently connected tunnel and a synchronous tunnel at that. So... The arm can speak to the application. The application can speak to the arm. And SignalR is perfect because it's a real-time technology. So it uses a concept of a hub, so a chat hub, where um, the, code, well, the, the messages from the client are sent to this chat hub where if we just have a little bit of a scan, we can see uh, further down. And I, I picked this out in, in my uh, blog article as well that we're connecting. So at the moment, that's the internal IP of my, my main machine where I've got Docker and Docker container running. So we're going to that IP on this port, and we're going to go to the chat hub. And essentially, that is where the client is sending the messages for the robot arm to pick up. But first, we have to make sure the robot arm is ready to accept those messages. So on that note, we'll click Docker run on the firmware side. So this is um ssh uh, into my raspberry pi as user pi and then we can see robot arm engaged so we are ready to go so if we flick over to a web browser and we go to localhost port 4080 there we go we're presented with my johnny chips blazer app at the home page let's click on robot arm and there we go we see that we've got essentially four server controls let's see if i can zoom in a little bit on there nope too much for servo controls. So let's see if they work. There we go. So now that, that top servo is lifting the robot arm up and down. And if you refer to my blog, you'll see that I mentioned about hardware PWM channels versus software PWM channels. Um, you'll notice that the first two servo motors, so the second servo motor is obviously the one that makes the arm go in and out, as you can see on the screen. And this one makes the arm go up and down as you can see now these bottom two are what we um what we call um software defined pwm channels now the reason that i've had to do it that way is because there's only two hardware channels available on a raspberry pi um i've recently picked up a couple of these pico pies so although there's no network connectivity as as, as yet I'm, I'm you know these have got i believe up to 16 hardware pwm channels so that direct route to the chip to give me that signal so these servos are a little bit juddery, 
but we'll see. We can we can spin the robot arm around, and we can we can move the claws in and out. But you'll you'll don't know if the camera's picking up, but there, there's like a little bit of interference, and that's because the signal and the message that's being sent is really basically contending. I believe. Don't quote me on this. I'm not an expert, but I believe it's it's fighting for capacity um, using the Raspberry Pi's processor. So there we have it. So on that note, let me just um, we'll zoom in again to the full screen just so you can get a bit of a, an idea. So you can see in the background there, I'm moving the sliders back and forth, and obviously the arm is going up and down. You can see the orange light flicker in a bit because it's the draw on power from the batteries. Um, you saw there that the the, the little Jaws just open and closes briefly, um, back and forth. We can go round in the circle. And finally, we can make our jaws open and close. So there we go. I, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of um, an insight into what it takes to get that robot arm working. I don't want to stop here. Um, what I'm hoping to do moving forward is... Um, is build out more. So push this container. I would like to push it into an, a, an Azure container registry and then take an image of that, uh, take take that image and push it into an Azure web app service and run it from Azure web app. I'm looking to integrate an IoT hub with the device. So actually there's one thing that I didn't show. I'll flick back to my desktop quickly. But part of the code, as I've mentioned in the blog article, and if we go back to um, my window here, you can see that as I move, if I just make this a little bit smaller, uh, like so. So as I move these servos, you can see that I actually get those messages appearing back in my my console. And that is the power of Signal R and what, what we're actually doing. So you can see, um, in theory, those messages could be anything. They could be sending back vital information from the robot arm, such as um, my my components are wearing out um or it could be it's too hot in this room so i'm i need to go down into you know into into go slow mode not to overheat so you can see that the power of these messages coming back could essentially be routed through to um to an azure iot hub and actions could be taken off those messages and that's where i hope to take it so i only wanted to do a brief video i know we've gone 10 minutes or so 12 minutes but hope you've really enjoyed what I've got to show you. Like I say, the link to the blog article is below if you want to find out. And a big shout out uh, to Pete Gallagher as well, because it's um, his instructions that I followed to piece this together from a programming perspective. So go and uh, seek Pete out and um, badger him on Twitter because uh, he, he's got some great information. Um, I'm hopeful that I'll do a few more of these videos as I look to do a bit more now with moving this solution into Azure, uh, just so you can see the kinds of things and how the mechanics work in the background. So until next time, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and feel free to reach out to me if you've got any uh, information or questions. Thanks a lot.